Hello, I'm Tomoki Nakamaru from the University of Tokyo in Japan. And the topic of my presentation today is uh, about our generator of Flat API, which we named SilverChain. Let's get started. And first, first of all, let me introduce Fluent API briefly. Fluent API is a popular way of designing embedded domestic languages that is used in method chaining style. Method chaining style is a coding style that joins uh, consecutive method calls together like a chain. And by method chaining, uh, a, sentence, a sentence of a DSL is emulated on the host language without any change of the host syntax. And seen here, um, the programmers can read, compose the chain from left to right as if reading an original sentence of a DSL. So um, when writing a sentence of a programming language, uh, syntax checking is very important. And there is a known technique to uh, check syntax of a chain uh, uh, of, a, of an emulated sentence by using the type system of the host language. The idea is of that technique is very simple. Just set the return type of each method um, based on what can be written next. So. Uh, for example, here, in this case, the, the, the chain, which represents uh, invert a syntactically incorrect query, is prevented by, uh, by setting the return type of select method to the, to the type shown here, to the, to the type which has from method but does not have a where method. So by, by designing API in this way, misuse, of course, misuse it misuse is detected at compile time, but in addition to that, auto completion can suggest necessary and sufficient candidates because it uses type, type information to, uh, to narrow down the list of candidates. So this, this design uh, provides very, very good user experiences. But there is a problem on the developer side. The problem is uh, that uh, developers need to define hundreds of classes for syntax checking. The, the actual number varies depending on grammar, but the, um, it often becomes too large to, uh, to define them, all of them by hand. For example, Juke, uh, which is a fluent API for SQL, uses approximately 600 classes, but its checking is, uh, its checking is still incomplete which means um, the developers need to define more than 60, uh, 600 classes to check all the rules of SQL. So uh, to solve that problem, we propose a tool named, tool named SilverChain. Uh, the, a, tool, a tool translates grammar into a fluent API with syntax checking feature. And the, for example, uh, the, the grammar on the left shows uh, is a grammar for, of a DSL for writing itemized documents. And from, from that grammar, SilverChain generates an API that can be used, as shown on the right here. In fact, uh, the idea to translate grammar into a Fluent API is not new, and uh, several tools have been proposed, such as Arix or and Fufu. But the distinctive property of our tool, SilverChain, is that uh, generated API supports two styles of chaining. The first one is subchaining style, which is a style for building a chain from subchains, partial subchains, and the other is a style for building a chain with flattened method code with a subchaining. Uh, that is called, uh, the second one is called no subchaining style. And uh, the, from the, the grammar on the left is the same one. And from that grammar, so the chain generates API and the, the API can be used. So here, the left one in the orange box is is using the uh, non-subchaining API and the right example 
right one or in the orange box use it, uh, it's using the subchain API to express the same thing, same item as documents. With with API generated by Silver Chain, the users can start subchaining uh, wherever grammar has a non terminal and can switch style depending on the situation. Of course, with a regenerating API. The left code in the in the in the orange box uses only non subchaining API, and the right right one uses only subchaining API to be the same item as documents and uh, Code in the center uses both styles to uh, both styles in mixed way uh, using subchain API only to compose list in the in the part to be to uh, be the part of a chain. This multi multi style support is very important and in practical use. And uh, let's see more examples in next two slides to show that to show that importance. The first case is when uh, is the case where uh, only non subchaining API is available. In this case, the users need to introduce meaningless variables to build a chain dynamically. And uh, in the in the two pieces of code here, the same item as document is composed, but but uh, in different styles of API of uh, of sorry of chaining. As seen, the users of API needs to introduce meaningless variables such as t here or on the in the left code and meaningless variable t2 to change a part of a chain when using non subchaining API but on the other hand the users can split the split the entire chain into subchains by its semantic uh, semantic meaning uh, sorry and by using subchaining API but what if only sub only subchaining API is available? In this case, the users need to write a deeply nested chain, even when original expression is is uh, is simple. And uh, on the the users need to compose a very deep deeply nested chain to uh, just to comp just to express the uh, simple uh, simple itemized documents, which can be expressed simply by using non subchaining API. And uh, seen, as seen, both styles have advantage and disadvantage, and depending on the situation. So it is important to follow and to, to, to allow the users to choose style when writing code by supporting more, uh, multiple styles in one fluent API. And uh, from this slide, I will talk about translation method from grammar to uh, fluent API. This slide shows the key idea to generate a fluent API with, with multiple style support. The translation is the construction of a PDA, a pushdown automata, that accepts token sequence produced from, from, uh, from, in, from input grammar. And here, token sequence consists of not only terminals, but also non-terminals. For example, in the case of this grammar, the grammar shown on the left, uh, such a PDA accepts uh, sequences such as begin S, end, O, and begin foo, end. And by encoding this PDA into class definitions, fluent API can be obtained. And uh, the encoding scheme will be explained more uh, explained later, but and basically each terminal is encoded into a method without arguments, and non-terminal is encoded into a method taking a subchain as, as its argument. This uh, this is the key idea of the translation. And, uh, in fact. There are many known methods for constructing PDA, and, uh, but in this case, the translation cannot add or remove non-terminals during the construction. 
And this is because adding or removing non-terminal will produce sub unexpected subchaining API. And let's see an example. And uh, suppose that suppose that a terminal T is added during the construction of PDA, as shown here. The the left one is original, and the next one is uh, modified. I know, rewritten grammar. And fluent API can be fluent API actually can be obtained by constructing PDA from this modified grammar, but the generated API contains meaningless or uh, the understandable subchaining API as shown on the right here. We do not want to, this API to be gener to be generated and uh, so we need to impose a constraint on the construction method to keep subchaining API meaningful. The, and the, the next is about uh, translation implementing in Silverchain. And uh, the variety of a PDA that Silverchain constructs is a single state real-time determines pushdown of murder. Uh, RDPDA for short, and this PDA has very simple structure and can be encoded into class definitions in many languages, such as Java. This this choice of of, the, of this PDA is kind of a design decision we made. And if you want to generate a fluent API only in Scala or Haskell which have more uh, sophisticated type system. And user, uh, you, can, you can construct more general PDA to generate a fluent API. But we, want, uh, we aim at generating fluent API in many language, many languages, such as Java or C++. And we, this is why, I choose, uh, why we choose to construct RD, our RD PDA in Silverchain. And the first step of our translation is preprocessing, and which in length spans non terminal to make recursion explicit. And uh, in this step, input grammar, such as shown on the upper side, upper side here, is rewritten into uh, the grammar such shown on the bottom here, such as shown on the bottom here. The inline expansion of non-terminal n is the actually actually uh, represent of non-terminal n with the union of n and the right hand side of n and the point is this modify and uh, this operation modifies this processing modifies uh, grammar but uh, this does not this operation does not add or remove non-terminals so this is, and this does not make uh, generated subchaining API uh, meaningless or inunderstandable. And from the rewritten grammar obtained by preprocessing, uh, Silverchain constructs RDPDA by mapping each token in grammar into a translation of, uh, of RDPDA. And when mapping, the head of a uh, recursive rule is mapped into a push action. Here, this is the uh, beginning. The first head, first token or the head of recursion is mapped into a push action, as shown on the figure on the bottom. And uh, the tail of recursion is mapped into a push, uh, sorry, pop action in the in the in the RDPDA. and the other method, uh, sorry, other tokens are encoded into a transition, just that uh, the move transition to a, the other token in the grammar is encoded into a move transition in the in the RDPDA. Finally, uh, we, 
Silver chain encodes the deconstructed RDPDA into class definitions. The encoding of RDPDA is relatively simple. And just, uh, this is just encoding uh, each stack element into a class and each transition into a method as shown here. For example, the list and the, the first transition on the, in the figure is encoded into the, into the first method write code, and uh, the second one is encoded in, like here, this. And the owner of a method is determined by the element to consume and uh, the element to consume, and the return type of each method is, is determined by the element to push into the stack. That's our translation, and uh, in silver chain, non-scanning API, we translate translate the grammar into the into a fluent API in that way. But in silver chain, in silver chain, non-scanning API is not always generated at everywhere, which means uh, some because two parts need to be composed using subchaining API. This limitation is due to our construction method of RDPDA and the silver chain. And the silver chain assumes that a recursive rule has an explicit begin call or an end call. But for example, in this case shown here, end call is optional in that grammar. And this case, silver chain cannot construct RDPDA. Uh, correctly, and this part needs to be written using uh, subchaining API. And this is it. And uh, thank you for listening.